Good morning, everyone. We're going to just take a minute while uh, folks kind of come into the Zoom room and join us here outside the carpentry program. My name is Sarah Turner. I'm the president at the North Bennett Street School, and I have the great pleasure to introduce the day. Rob O'Dwyer, who's on the other side of the camera that I'm talking to, is going to be your host today. So Rob is going to walk you over the course of the week through all of our full-time programs. Today he will focus on our carpentry program and our preservation carpentry program. And so you'll get to meet our faculty, our students, you'll see the projects that they're working on in both of those cases. But even if you know that you want to be a carpenter or a preservation carpenter, I encourage you to come back over the rest of the week because we'll still talk with bookbinders and violin makers and jewelers. And I really encourage you to follow your curiosity about the school. The stories from the different programs are amazing and you might find something you didn't anticipate. And so with that, I will turn it over to Rob and he'll go in to meet the carpenters. Uh, have a great day and I'll get to see you later this week. Sarah, thank you very much. Yeah, you bet. Thanks, Rob. All right, we'll see you later. All right. Welcome. Hello, good morning. Welcome, welcome. Morning. Welcome. My name is Peter. I'm Brock. We are the two instructors in carpentry. We'll uh, take the next hour and walk you through uh, carpentry with some demos. Uh, we'll start with a demo and then we'll wrap up with a live Q&A. So uh, see if you have questions, we'll take five, 10 minutes at the end to answer any questions live for you. So what we're gonna demo, um, we're gonna demo coping, hand coping. And what we have are crown molding. A lot of this uh, you'll see at the top of a wall. So when you have a wall and a ceiling, where they meet is where you would find the crown molding. A lot of times crown molding is mitered to fit nicely because you have a profile. So when you have an outside corner, the profiles will come together and they'll match up perfectly and get nailed. Now, if you have an inside corner, so you have a wall and another wall coming in, you need a different kind of joint to fit there that to, uh, to make it really tight. And that is called a coped joint. So if you were to take this profile and cut the exact shape of the matching profile, you're making a negative out of one piece and fitting it perfectly to the next piece. This is the uh, most accurate way, the most effective way of coping inside corners because of the wood shrinkage. You don't get gaps. Uh, it should be a press fit as we call it in trim carpentry. So it bites right in. And I'm gonna demonstrate that by hand and then we'll go through the, the uh, shop space here and we'll end up at the table saw and we'll see how to, you can actually cope on the table saw. So the first step for coping is you walk over to the chop saw and you make an angle cut and you can start to see how the angle, the bottom is gonna come across and made up. So we start with an angle cut, then because we're being we want to be very accurate, you're going to highlight the edge of that because if you don't highlight it, it's very hard to actually see that. So I'm just using the side of the pencil to put a, what probably won't even show up on camera, a black line right at the corner of that. So you can see this black line coming around, comes up here and around. Now I also have to do one more step which is to square a line across the bottom. So now we are going to use a handsaw and we're going to cut right up this profile and we will end up with the back cut out like this. So you, we're going to follow this profile and the order of operations, the order of operations is we're going to cut down from the top. This is our first cut. Then we're going to cut up this long profile. That's the second cut. Then we're going to cut down for our third cut and up and around. So we have one, two, three, four. So let's make that cut. We're going to use a coping saw. We're going to end up at the outside of the table here, right? So I'm going to pencil this one in too. And 
and I already put the line on that one. So our first cut is going to be on the back side here. I'm going to go right up that profile. And the secret to coping is just don't try to push the saw through the cut. Just let the, the blade do all the cutting. So keep the saw moving, keep the saw moving. And I'm gonna take it out. Then I'm gonna come up here, my second cut. And this whole time, I'm really back beveling the saw. I'm not trying to push the saw through, just letting it cut, trying to track up that cut line. Use my finger to add tension to the blade. First cut, second cut, and now I'm going to cut down my third cut, right in the corner here. Slide out. Now I'm going to come up and around the last profile. cutting the whole time. There we go. So now I can take this and if I put it like this, I'm going to get the bottom to come in like that. We have a coped joint that'll match the profiles on the inside corner. And the reason we're coping, it's easier to install, much easier to cut. Uh, any shrinkage expansion in the wood will still be hidden. If you're done right, there's no need to caulk or anything. It's a press fit, it'll bite in and it'll stay tight forever. So that's hand coping and we will go around the machine room and uh, look at what some of the students are doing. And while we're walking around, if we pan down here, when you enter the program, everybody gets a tool list and set up with all the tools you need to be a first time carpenter, right? So it's very important that you understand that we assume that we're getting beginner carpenters, uh, right? No one has to be an expert at carpentry. You can come in as a blank slate you just have to have a passion and desire for carpentry. We give you the tools. We have these Milwaukee packouts that every student gets. And the day one, after introductions, we start labeling and, and undoing all the tools. It's kind of like Christmas on the first day of school, to be <laughs> honest. So let's walk through to the front bench room, as we call it. So, in our bench room, uh, we get to do a lot of unique projects. And it's important that you understand that our goal is to in introduce you to everything you need to build a residential like family house. A house in the suburbs, a house in the city, to make ad uh, additions, and roof framing is part of it. So one of the units that we go deep into is hip roof framing 
and gable roof framing. Other topics that we cover are uh, obviously wall framing, 60 on center and two foot on center, uh, so floor systems. We cover stair building, uh, introduction to stair building. So you build a full scale set of stairs. We, we do cabinetry. So you'll be introduced to how to build like kitchen cabinets or building cabinets. Uh, all the cabinets you see in the shop, whether the cherry cabinets out front or any other cabinets were built by the students over the years. So we really do try to give you uh, a little vignette on all the topics that you need to know so that you can have a career in carpentry. Uh, here are the students doing, we're finishing up hip roof framing this week and we're gonna trim those out. We're gonna go into the machine room and we'll try coping on the, on the, uh, the table saw. That's great. Thank you, Peter. Hi, everybody. Hey, Brock. I'm going around the backside. Sorry. You're good. Okay. So, you just saw with Peter how um, you can cope with a handsaw. So, a more traditional method for coping uh, profiles, whether that's crown molding or chair rail or baseboard cap, there, wherever you've got a, a profile in a piece of trim on a building, you can cope with a handsaw in order to get a nice inside corner fit. That's one of the keys, inside corner fit. Um, there are two other methods that we cover predominantly as a department, using a grinder to cope an inside corner, as well as using a table saw. So let me show you how to cope with a grinder real quick. Uh, bear with me for a second as I gear up. As always, with everything we do, we try and have a focus. And I just saw Rob, who's holding the camera for us, just threw his safety glasses on. Everything, <laughs> everything we do, there's always a focus on making sure that we have safety with the students in everything we teach. So making sure that we've got our pr appropriate protective equipment, personal protective equipment, so your PPEs. I'm gonna wear my earmuffs and my safety glasses while I run a grinder, and then I'm gonna run the table saw. Okay, so I'll show you grinder first. And then I'm going to go into the table saw. A couple of things to think about while you're using them. So just like with the coping saw, I've got to think about the direction of the material, the grain that I'm working with, and ensuring that I'm using the tool in a safe way. This is just a regular uh, four and a half inch angle grinder that I've outfitted with two 24 grit uh, sanding discs that are back to back so I can use the tool in either direction. Okay, I'm going to use this to remove all the material and get a nice coped edge just like this one. All right, here we go.
Now, just as with a hand coping exercise, that's a roughing exercise. So I, I've, I've removed most of the material, just like with the coping saw by hand, I would have removed most of the material. And then I've got to switch over to a selection of whatever my preferred files or rasps are, different shapes in order to get into the crevices of the profile and clean all that up. So real quick, with a nice half round file, I can get in and clean up and remove the rest of the material right back to my lines. Use my one from before. A little idea as to how that's going to look. A little more fine tuning and adjustment to put into that one, but you get the idea. A nice, slightly faster way uh, using one of our mechanized tools that we have with us in the shop. We want to emphasize a traditional way of doing something, understanding why we're coping, um, where coping comes from in technique, how it would have been done before the advent of powered or cordless tools uh, that could help us speed the process up, but having to get down the fundamentals first before we move into something uh, that makes us a little more efficient as a carpenter. Speaking of efficiency, let's move over to the table saw and I'll show you what that looks like. So the table saw is an option for me when I've got a piece of stock that is what I'm gonna to refer to as flat back stock. So it's a flat back, it's meant to sit against the wall. It is not a sprung profile. A sprung profile being something like crown molding that extends off of the wall. So it has a spring angle to it where it sits out, it would meet the ceiling and the wall uh, and make a nice detail at the top of a wall. Something like this profile here is flat back. It's designed to sit flat against the wall. It does not lean out away from the wall at all. Because it has this flat back on it, it's an ideal choice to use on a table saw. Let's see how that would look. When I go to use a table saw, just like when I'm using the grinder or using a coping saw, I have to pay attention to the material. I have to make sure I'm not removing too much material at any one time putting too much lateral force on the table saw blade, uh, making sure that I'm removing just a, a, a safe amount of material, not putting too much pressure on the table saw blade, and not wanting to destroy the material uh, while I'm working on it. Again, safety first, safety glasses on, ear protection on. Normally, I'm gonna leave it off for this time, but normally we would also turn on our dust collection system, better for our saws, better for our lungs if we can get all the dust out of our tools while we're using them. But I'm gonna leave it off because it's a very loud machine inside this echoey chamber that we're in. Thank you, Brock. Okay, here we go.
the accuracy on all these methods is amazing. So just like with my coping saw or with the grinder or a jigsaw or a table saw, it's a roughing exercise. I've removed most of my material and now I've got to go and fine tune it and get something that hopefully looks like that. Not too bad. Not bad. Thank you. So that's another option. We cover about four different techniques for coping when we do interior trim work, whether it's uh, hand coping with a coping saw, with a grinder, with a jigsaw, or with a table saw, and then having to clean that up with files and rasps and get a nice tight fit. We're trying to aim for really tight tolerances, no light coming through. Um, we don't want to rely on wood glue or putties or uh, fillers of any kind. We want our woodwork to stand for itself and not have to be uh, covered up by the painter when they come through after us. So that's the goal anyway. That's great. So while we're in the machine room, let's take a look at the machine room because like all the woodworking departments, we have a full machine room. So we have a, a jointers, right? Um, we have the table saws. We have, and I, the students are gonna, we have three table saws, two jointers, two thickness planers. And one of the important things that we do is we spend, we spend a week learning how to tune up and dial these machines in through uh, machine maintenance. We have guest uh, lectures. And so that has been invaluable for a lot of people graduating where they can walk into a, a shop and know how to tune up a table saw, know how to tune up the, the jointer, the band saw. So we use this shop to build our cabinet lessons. Uh, we use it all the time, in fact. So. We'll, we'll come out here and we will look at, uh, pan over to the right and look at some of the cherry cabinets. Thanks, Brock. Yeah. So we have all the white upper shelves, all the lower shelves the students built last year. Um, if you, so if you want to talk about that, Brock, that's fine. Sure. So every year, uh, as Peter's talking about, we have a cabinet lesson. Um, last year we decided to use the department for the cabinet lesson, so that gave us a chance to build uh, cherry lowers and poplar uppers, poplar uppers so we could have a painting, cabinet painting lesson, um, and then the cherry lowers so we can cover uh, natural or, or uh, finishes that would allow you to bring the grain of the wood through. Uh, so these are all covered in or coated, uh, finished with a uh, boiled linseed oil and pine tar mixture. Uh, the uppers are painted. This lesson is not only a, a sheet good lesson, dealing with uh, plywoods, dealing with cabinet geometry, dealing with hardwoods. This is a solid cherry top. These doors are solid cherry uh, rail and style with a cherry plywood panel with a pre-finished maple interior. The uppers are the same plywood carcasses with a poplar face frame that's been painted. This allows us to talk about cabinet construction, finishing, uh, trim techniques, as well as the installation of cabinetry, scribing things to a surface. We, used, we had a brick surface in the back for the cabinet, uh, excuse me, the countertop to be scribed to. That was a challenge on itself. It's not square at either side. So lots of different challenges in order to get this set of cabinets in this space. Peter talked about earlier, as we were walking out of the machine shop, that students learn how to maintain the machines. It goes back to everything we do. There's fundamentals, and then using the Sloyd method from North Bennett Street, you're building on everything. So you're learning the fundamentals of how to sharpen your tools by hand so that you have effective block planes and chisels as you're using them uh, while you're doing trim work, while you're framing, you have to have sharp tools. Well, same thing, when we go into use machines, if you don't know how to maintain the machines, then we end up with poor quality work coming out of our machine work. If we don't keep our joiners and planers really well tuned up, well then you're, you're gonna end up with subpar material coming out on the other side that you're then trying to make cabinet doors or cabinet countertops or saw horses out of, no matter what it is. Even if it's something as simple as a toolbox or a set of saw horses, we have to make sure that our fundamentals in the techniques we're using to build something, as well as the techniques we use to maintain our machines and our tooling, all have to be 
up to par, up to our standards so that we can move forward and, and progress and use that Sloyd method to learn something, try it again at a, at a more intense level, and then progress past that. Yeah. Thank you. Peter, want to take us out to the front? Yeah. So we know that you're coming into the program, you're coming into the program as beginners. And that is absolutely a great reason, a great place to come to North Bend as beginners. We know you're going to make mistakes. We want you to make mistakes. We want you to make a mistake and we'll make sure we have extra stock. So these rafters, we don't buy the exact number of rafters, we buy extra so you can practice cutting them. We uh, demonstrate, I'll, Brock and I will demonstrate the cut, we'll talk you through like what, how we're holding our fingers, how we are actually looking at the blade when we're making cuts. So a lot of knowledge can be gained online from like YouTube and uh, just Google, right? We've all done that. But the reality is it's the combination of the knowledge with the muscle memory in the hands and the, the, the ability to visualize, to execute the work. That's why you come to North Bennett, because you want to learn the hands-on component, not just this is a hip roof, this is a hip rafter, but how do you do the math? How do you hold the framing square? How do you even use the skill saw to make a, a nice cut coming down the end of the uh, rafter tail? So part of the, the whole program is actually we will go through, uh, and the students will be doing this right after Christmas, we go through a week of learning CAD drawing through SketchUp. So you will have like basically one-on-one -on -one training through online. The students will, after Christmas will stay at home for the week after Christmas. They will jump on a Zoom meeting every day and for uh, several hours a day with breaks to work independently, they will learn SketchUp online. So you will go through and be introduced to SketchUp. You will be drawing uh, not only like the roof frame, but the next iteration of this framing is to build a small room with doors and windows and drywall and finished floor. So stairs. stairs, we will go through all the steps. So CAD is also a very important uh, part of our program. It's not gonna make you an expert. It's just gonna introduce it to you. Um, and students have really run with that to help them in their career. So besides the roof framing, uh, this will be dismantled. Then we build the small room. So we cover installing windows and doors. We cover how to order windows and doors. We know that uh, a lot of people are used to going to Home Depot, which is fine, but we'll introduce you to lumber yards, which brings to bear like a relationship with the lumber yard where you learn how to interact with the sales rep. You learn how to call up and have, ask questions, like what's the material I, you might recommend for this or how to order material. So there's all this, this nomenclature, these terms associated with carpen, carpentry, like what's a 16 penny nail? What's, why is it two by four, not two by four, right? So there's so much little thing, um, it's just so much to learn in carpentry. It's endless, right? So we, we start out slow and then we ramp up and at the end of the year, we go outside to do real world projects for real clients that are paying real money with a contract and everything else. And we spend about two months. Um, the, the clients this year, we're gonna build a full kitchen and remodel the whole kitchen and, and rebuild a back wall with new windows. We are going to go to another client and build, they have horse, horses and we're gonna build some um, at sheds, that small buildings for the horses to go into in their paddock. Uh, we're gonna get into timber framing. So we try to introduce timber framing. Uh, that's, that's both Brock and I love timber framing. So we do try to get it if there's time in the curriculum to get timber framing introduced. There's just, just a ton of information to cover, but we know we're all starting from the same point, like how to read the tape measure, how to put a little uh, arrow next on the piece of wood to, to clearly mark where you're, where you're supposed to cut. So sometimes the students, students are always asking like, what are our tolerances? Our tolerances are you, that you split the pencil line when you make cuts. 
Do we think you can do that right off the bat? No. Do we think it'll take a year and then some? Sure. But we're here to, to encourage you to work to that tolerance where you're cutting the pencil line with your skill saw, right? Where you're learning how to read plumb with the bubble on the uh, level perfectly in the center. Uh, and all of that just takes time and experience and Brocker are here more than here to help you gain that experience. Um, the, uh, the, we're trying to give you, we're trying to give our students the skills, the fundamentals, and the background to go and work in any aspect of residential construction that might be of interest to them. Whether that's working with a trim crew or a framing company or a general contractor that's doing foundation up, we're really looking to give our students the skills, the knowledge, and the techniques necessary to jump in with any company. We, we want to ensure that you find a part of residential construction that is your, that, that captures your interest, whether it's trim or framing or uh, decking or roof work or stair construction. There's something in residential co construction that will appeal to each and every one of our students. And we're trying to give you the skills necessary to go and jump in with a company that specializes in that so that you can start your career in the direction that you were hoping to. We're trying to make sure that you have a well-rounded construction, residential construction education so that you can jump in with any crew no matter where you are in the country because we get students from all over the country that are coming here to learn from North Bennett Street School instructors and then are going to head back home. We have a, a student right now from the Mid-Atlantic region who's looking forward to heading back home at some point and working in residential construction in the Virginia, Maryland area. We want to give somebody the skills that's not just a Massachusetts education that, that will uh, allow you to take those skills and transfer wherever you want across the country. Um, but it focuses on a repetitive, Sloyd-based, residential platform framing construction background, giving you all the skills, bringing in great guest instructors, whether that's on stairs or building science or building code compliance. We're trying to bring in the people with the specialized nuance information from the industry that can give you the upper hand when you head out in the job market trying to get a job and to be impactful with whatever company you join as soon as you leave North Bennett Street so that when you leave here in May uh, you're able to jump right in with a company and be a member of the crew and not have to worry about catching up. You have to learn their lingo but as soon as you're on the right page with the folks you're working with you're right in. That's what we're aiming for. So, yeah so some of you are sitting out there like I'm gonna pay a lot of money I'm gonna to come to school, what's the job market like? So one of the benefits of coming to North Bennett is that you get plugged into the alumni and student job and commission board. So every week, uh, at least for the last two or three years, about two or three jobs in Carpentry are posted every week to the password protected uh, job board. So students can jump on there and look at what's coming through. Students can jump on there and say, oh, there's somebody in my town that wants a door rehung or wants a little cabinet built or wants a deck uh, put on. Brock and I are more than happy to help you advise you on how to do that. But the reality is you would have to not want a job right now in carpentry. The carpentry, uh, if you've at all been paying attention to the news, is just red hot, red hot. Like, so um, we have contractors calling all the time asking, can we get students, can we get students? And we encourage you because the, the work week for us is Monday through Thursday. That gives you Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. A lot of students are, uh, will take that Friday and that Saturday to work with a contractor. It's great, you get two days in the field, you get to come back into school and apply and learn even more. So yes, there is a very strong job market. Yes, we give you me means of actually getting those jobs through our job portal. And any student right now that wants a job can have a job. And that'll be true for you next year. Uh, and uh, it's just a, an unbelievably time to actually jump into carpentry. So we're gonna go out front and we'll do some Q and A. We'll take a look at the cherry cabinets. Great. So we did have a question uh, that came out um, because Brock mentioned Sloyd, and I'll just, uh, I'll just give a, a simple answer there for our viewer. 
Um, first, I encourage you to, to research what SLOID is. Um, North Bennett Street School um, is, is based on SLOID educational methodology. Uh, the two simple things about SLOID is that through repetition, you create muscle memory. Uh, and we begin with things that are simple and build upon each, uh, build upon each step to become more complicated, uh, much like the cabinets that, uh, that we see behind us. Certainly, you don't start out the first month or two in the carpentry department building cabinets. We work up to that. We work through building the, the, the phases of, of residential construction as though we were building a home. We talk about simple projects. We build a set of sawhorses. You build a toolbox. Basic skills to give you kind of a ramp up into um, construction. So that way you are now comfortable or, or gaining a, a level of comfort with your basic tools that you're gonna need on every one of our projects. From there, we're heading into framing, floor framing, wall framing, roof framing. It's, it's rough construction. You can be, um, you can have an off day and it's not gonna hurt you. We can try and fail and grab another piece of wood and give it another shot and it's not a big deal. That's why you're here in school, to make mistakes, to learn from those mistakes and to keep going. Building on each of those skills, we, we disassemble our knee wall and roof lesson. We build Bennett Town, so now you have full height walls. We're installing windows and doors. Peter just mentioned this a few minutes ago. Trim, drywall, paint, finished floor, set of stairs, and you're building on each one of those lessons. It's not an immediate ramp through all of it. There's times for us to backpedal for a, a moment or two for a week so that we can refocus on something that's a, a vital skill to spend a little more time focusing down on. And then moving from there into some of the more uh, really precise technical work like cabinet construction, taking the skills from stair lesson. Stair lesson is very technical, uh, very skilled, um, has really tight tolerances and using that same structure and moving into a cabinet lesson. Same again, tight tolerances, um, materials that have to be uh, near perfect in construction in order to get an a, a usable set of cabinets. We can't have things that are out of square or out of level uh, in a set of cabinets. In order to get the drawers and doors to work properly, they have to be constructed, constructed um, in, in our best way possible in order to get that cabinet to turn out really, really well. So building on all those skills and then unleashing those skills on the spring project, like Peter was talking about, the horse sheds and the um, kitchen um, this year. So taking that culmination of skills that you've built up for seven months or so, yeah. and then taking that out for two months in the spring and giving it a whirl and seeing how you feel on an active job site. Um, where we start amping up the pressure. There's now weather issues. There's real customers that we're building for. Um, having to understand the relationships between your vendors, like your HVAC, electrical, plumbing, architects, design expertise, all those folks, building inspectors, how to get all that to work together on a job and get something to, to finish on time and on budget, which are not yeah. things we can ignore about the residential construction world. Those, those were very real constraints of scope, schedule, and cost. Yeah. So I can go over some things that uh, students stress about coming into the program, right? Great. So we stress about the math, right? Like, I've never been good at reading a tape measure, right? I cannot find a 15 16 for the life of me. That's okay. You're gonna start out and it's gonna be a little overwhelming, but we will, the more you do it, the more that you work through it, the easier it gets. Roof framing math. We go through that, we repeat the process every morning with a, a, a math problem. And so you learn how to convert, uh, you know, decimals to fractions and vice versa. So don't let math or the, the lack of math steer you away from coming to North Bennett. Um, we use a lot of math, but we have lots of different techniques for dealing with that. And it's as simple as learning how to use the framing square. All those mysterious numbers on the framing square are, are beautiful to the carpenter because we learn how to use them. We don't have to do the math. We can go to the framing square and say, oh, there's the number I'm looking for, right? But you gotta know how to find that number. Um, another concern is, um, you know, when you're in North Bennett, every student that graduates comes back and says, I can't believe how much I learned, but didn't realize I was learning. So everything you're doing 
is going to help you ramp up your career because we're not going to make you master carpenters, right? You're not nine months full time, but we will definitely give you a very sharp learning curve so that when you jump in onto a crew, as Brock said, you can kind of learn how that carpenter crew works and you can just kind of dovetail in or fold in very nicely. So we are, we are excited to see some of you here next year. We definitely, you can reach out to us. You can reach out to, to Rob. Uh, we're more than happy to, to come. One of the questions we get usually from students is, should I do carpentry or PC, right? So carpentry or preservation carpentry. Carpentry is nine months, one year. Preservation carpentry is two months. One of the advice I, I suggest is that you look into the textbooks that we use. So we use a, a textbook for carpentry. They use the same textbook in PC, Preservation Carpentry, but they add on to it with some other books. If the carpentry books, uh, just like learning modern tools, modern machines is what you, really gets you interested in carpentry, that's probably the program for you. If taking out a wooden hand plane or an ax and reading through books on how they did it in the 18th and 19th century, if that kind of speaks to you, then maybe PC is the angle you want to go to. So don't be afraid to reach out and uh, kind of just have a conversation. We'll end up talking on the phone and we can talk through what program might work for you. Um, but yeah, we've had a really good time. Really appreciate you stopping by uh, and we hope to see you next year. That's great. Peter, thanks so much. Um, I just, Rob, real yeah, quick before please. you go, please understand if you're looking into one of the programs at North Bennett Street School, it doesn't end when you're graduated, when, when you've left here, excuse me. Um, one, we get a lot of students that repeat programs, that, that come from one program and go to another. It's not uncommon for a carpentry student to head down to preservation carpentry and spend another two years in the building. But if you choose to graduate and move on and start your career, the relationship doesn't end there. We are constantly in communication with graduates who've been out in the field working and are reaching back out and saying, hey, how can I reconnect with school to come in and help out? Also, hey, this is what I'm up to. Can you send some more students our direction? I like the company I'm at and I'm looking for, we're looking for new um, carpenters to join us. We're always in connection with our alumni, uh, trying to get them to come in and help us improve the program and help them keep going, give them more connections out in the working world, uh, make sure that they are happy and healthy and successful wherever they've landed after they've left uh, the North Bennett Street school building um, after graduation. So it, it, it's a nine month program, but it doesn't end after nine months. Yeah. Your connection here at school um, can stay with you the rest of your life. Yeah, so if, That's if great. while I have you, Rob, we well, can yeah. look at some of the previous projects, right? Yeah. So, um, you know, we're, we're gonna talk about we're gonna talk about just trim it out, right? So you have a, a freeze, a soffit, a fascia, like a shadow or shingle mold and a drip edge, right? We're gonna get in, into the field to do that. This is actually exactly where the students are uh, that you've walked around the roof systems. They're gonna install the soffit and the, and the fascia on their little models, so we get into that. Um, we're using uh, one year, they were able to go out to the satellite campus and build sheds. That was one of their projects. The big thing about carpentry is we want to use as much modern tools. So we're looking for like the, the cordless drill, the cordless saw, the cordless that, you know, that's the way the industry is going. We're moving away from corded tools. So you're going to get cordless tools in our pack outs. You're going to get a cordless skill saw, a cordless jigsaw, a cordless drill, and a cordless impact gun, right? So you're, you're going to get set up with quite a lot. We have a lot of the corded, so we have corded chop saws that you can use. We have all, so all the tools you'll need, right? So here's another project, a spring project, in which they build a garage for somebody out in the field. And this is exactly what we're trying to get you to, to ramp up to, is to go out, do modern framing, modern tools, and to, uh, to rock it out in the real world, right? So uh, we get into a little timber framing. A lot of times, what is timber framing, right? So timber framing is nothing more than joining wood together using mortise and tenon or traditional joints with wooden pins. So a timber frame stands up without metal fasteners in it. 
Posts and beam, that's another phrase. Posts and beam is where you have big metal steel plates kind of gusseting the timbers together. So posts and beam, we don't get into that too much, but we definitely try to cover a little bit of timber framing. Why? Every house that you do an addition on is going to have timber frame, right? So if, if every, for 200 years, there's timber frame in America, when you open up the wall to build your addition, you're going to be looking at a timber frame. So we get, in, get into timber framing. Um, the last photo over here is we get into stair building, right? Mm -hmm. So you're going to build a full set of stairs. Uh, you're going to learn how to describe the skirt board. You're going to learn how to put in the risers, the treads, and do all the math behind that. And you're going to have a chance to, to work through that process in small groups. And it's just yet another skill set that you're going to ramp up to, to use in the real world. So we, we think our department is pretty darn special because we get you for nine months. We get to see where you are a year later and off and running in your career. We have, uh, thankfully, um, we've had plenty of students that just come back naturally and want to speak to the students that, that are in the program. One, because a lot of students are like, we're learning all this. It's, it, they, ha they get to apply it in the classroom, but what's it like in the real world? All the students that are coming back talking about it say, you know, absorb as much as you can here because you use it almost from day one, right? I have a student this year that's working on a job site and he was working with somebody else that was new to carpentry and they were trying to pick up the stack of lumber and, and my student said, hey, you should try it this way because he had just learned it like two weeks earlier how to carry the lumber and get it up onto your shoulder the easiest way possible. So like tiny little things like that that you just don't even think about. No one's sitting there on YouTube how to carry a pack of lumber the right way or how to shrink wrap lumber up the right way. But that's the reality. Like there's so much learning. Just uh, when we get deliveries, how do you take a delivery of lumber and, and offload it quickly and keep it out of the dirt? Um, meeting on uh, tours. So we will go to a lumber yard, as I mentioned earlier, but we also go to a sawmill and we see how a tree turns into our two by four stock and we meet the owner. So, I mean, one of the greatest things about North Bennett is it's not just carpentry that you're coming to join. You're joining the North Bennett community. Brock mentioned that, but that includes like all these vendors that we have, right? So we have sawmills and we have electricians and we have HVAC. We have just a, a whole web of, of uh, unique specialists in their trades that we can call on and then we can do project tours with some of our advisors who are contractors that graduate. So um, it's, it's just an amazing resource that allows you to plug into a North Bennett community. Uh, we cover a lot of ground in nine months. What does the day look like, right? So the typical day looks like 7.30, on the nose we start. Uh, and I'm gonna tell you right now, you might as well know, 15 minutes early is on time, on time is late. So we start <laughs> at 7.30, uh, we go to 9.30, we have a coffee break. We go to 12.45 uh, and we have a lunch break. The day we clean up starting around 4 o'clock and we're, we're out of here when we're cleaned up by 4.30, right? One thing you need to be mindful of is all these projects that happen outside, they're great, but you have to get yourself to that project, right? You are 100% uh, expected to drive and be on the job site at 7.30. The job sites we try to keep within the 495 interstate beltway of Boston. So uh, we had jobs this past year in Haverhill. That's just on the other side up north. The jobs this year are going to be in Upton and Franklin. Uh, so you need to kind of prepare yourself to be able to commute to those job sites just like you would to any other job. Right. So. Um, when we leave the North End in the end of March, beginning of April, to go to these job sites, you pack up your tools, and the rest of the school year is actually in the field. So, um, the first, what would you expect the first week of school? It's a great question. Everyone comes in with the same level of stress. It's a big change. Some of you are making career changes. Some of you are coming straight out of uh, schooling and you've decided not to go the four-year college BABS route. You wanted to actually get into the trades uh, and you can make good money in the trades. Uh, so you've decided to come to North Bennett. Everybody's making a big change in their life coming to North Bennett, right? Just, that's a no-brainer. 
So you're, day one, we introduce you to the building. We take a walking tour of the north end of Boston because we live in an amazing and work in an amazing environment uh, in historic north end. Uh, we get into all the tools, unpacking the tools, and we get into, within the first week, how to use some of those tools, how to read the tape measure. We get into drafting. We do a little bit of drafting where you have to learn to draw a full scale on like a piece of plywood or some paper, your toolbox, your sawhorses, and we start using those tools right away. Uh, so there is a lot of ground that we cover, but I cannot stress enough that you're coming into a North Bend community and everyone's making a big change to get here. So enjoy the ride when you, decide, when you sign up and commit. Uh, one of the questions I'm going to ask you for help, uh, Peter, yeah. is a lot, of, a lot of interest in the packouts. One of the questions was, um, you know, are they on loan? No, they are not. Um, these, uh, everyone purchases tools as part of the program. Information about uh, the cost uh, is on the website. Um, and, and as has been mentioned by faculty earlier, we're setting you up for a successful career. So you purchase these tools, you learn how to use them, maintain them, uh, and, and bring them with you when you graduate. And then there was a question about sort of a, a little bit of a tour. I know these yeah. things are complex, but... No, no. So, you, I mean, the Packout is a, in Milwaukee, everybody in the industry is kind of mimicking, so you can go to Home Depot, uh, Rigid. These Packouts are individual boxes that lock together and come apart. They have improved the Packout. Uh, so this pack out represents like last year's version. The new ones we get will have drawers. Huh. So the same concept and that you can take them apart, but instead of having to dig through them to open them up, you can then open up drawers, right? So every year we uh, get into the pack outs and uh, it's just a way to keep it organized. It's something that you'll have for the rest of your life. And if you actually are on YouTube, one of the advantages, so one of the realities is when COVID hit, we jumped online two years ago. So Brock and I have combed through a lot of online resources. So what we end up doing is saying, you should watch this YouTube channel or you should watch, uh, listen to this podcast. So for example, Spencer Lewis, right? He's a trim carpenter out in Indiana, fantastic, right? You want to see how his pack up set up? That's a great resource. So we can direct you to what we think are actually legitimate professionals in the field doing real tasks, right? So whether that's Robin Clevett in England, whether that's, uh, you know, the podcast Modern Craftsman, right? So there's lots of information on the YouTube. Not all of it's good. So come to us and we can go. So go for, tell you how to find the best YouTube channels. So we hope to see you next year. We're really glad that you spent the hour with us. Uh, and give us a shout out to us. Give us an email, or contact Rob, and we'll be in touch. Peter, thank you so much. Brock, thank you so much.